I have had so much fun filming this series, 10 decluttering tips I wish I'd known sooner from specific gurus, minimalists, decluttering experts. Today, let's focus on Joshua Becker. Some people call him the father of minimalism and whether or not you consider yourself a minimalist or want to be called a minimalist does not matter at all. If you are here because you want to simplify, you want to minimize in any way, regardless of what you call yourself in the end, then hopefully this video is helpful. Joshua says, if you are new to decluttering, gain momentum by starting with just five minutes a day. I started with an eight hour project when I first started my decluttering journey. This was my pantry. I completely, um, I did it, <laughs> I finished the project, but I completely overwhelmed myself. In fact, I chose many large decluttering projects right off the bat and ended up getting extremely burned out in the process. So I wish I'd started with something like five minutes a day and started building that momentum. I love challenges. I think they're great because there's an end in sight. So he says, take a 12, 12, 12 challenge. Throw out 12 pieces of trash. You're gonna donate 12 items and then you're gonna relocate 12 items. This would be a great time to set the timer for five minutes, 10 minutes, and just see if you can find these 12 items. Be prepared, have a trash bag with you, have a little donation basket, make it very easy and just race the clock. Don't pick up your phone. And if you wanna make it a 10, 10, 10 or a five, five, five challenge, go ahead and do that. Whatever you feel like is achievable that will get you started. That's the hardest part, right? Is getting going. At least that's been my experience. So he says specifically the 12, 12, 12. I absolutely love it. Love the concept. He says, when we think about decluttering, our minds go to the most overwhelming space. And this is what I would do. This is what my mind would do any time I thought about decluttering, instantly my mind would go to that playroom because that's a room that was really, really bothering me or it would go to the closet. It was really embarrassed by my closet. It's one of the rooms that I felt like I have got to get this under control. My pantry, another area that my mind would instantly go. So I absolutely love not allowing yourself or stopping yourself when your mind goes to that most overwhelming space, which I think we all do this and then shifting that and saying, okay, what's an easier space? This leads me perfectly into the next one. He says, start small, like in your car. Start on the coffee table, one small surface. Start in the bathroom, maybe the bathroom countertops. These are very small wins, small victories. And again, you're building that encouragement, you're building those muscles, and you're going to get to the large projects. You're not putting them off forever, you're just working your way up. Okay, this one is really good. Joshua says to declutter faster, start with what you need to keep instead of focusing on what you can get rid of or what you need to get rid of. And I think this can also be a mental shift. Instead of thinking, oh no, this is gonna be so hard. I'm gonna, in order to have a clutter-free home, I'm gonna have to get rid of, and your mind goes there, and you go to those items or those things or those categories that you love and you want to keep, and you start to panic if you're anything like me, and you freak yourself out, and you're like, I can't get rid of that, I can't get rid of those memories, oh no, I spent all this money, it was a gift, and you go on and on and on. I love the idea of focusing on what you can keep. The Becker method is where you work through your home room by room, starting with the easy places like your car, living room, bathroom, such a great place to start. And if you're taking my 2024 declutter challenge, it's another series I'm running right now where I'm taking you location by location throughout your home. And by the end of the year, we should have hit every single spot in your house and I'm gonna declutter alongside you. So I start you in the bathroom. I agree, this is a great place. Don't start with your pantry like I did. Way too overwhelming. Don't start with your closet. I like to start in easy places now now that I know better, like the bathroom. So start in easier places, go room by room, 
and then finish an entire space before moving on. It's tempting when you feel that burnout, when you're feeling overwhelmed, you're like, I wanna keep decluttering because I wanna keep making progress, but I'm sick of this room. I'm sick of this space. And it's hard to keep yourself encouraged and to force yourself to keep going back to that same project. But I am telling you, it is the way to go. So don't move on to any other project or any other room in your house, no matter how small or large the area is that you're working on until the spot that you've started with is completely done. Joshua says distinguish between organizing and minimizing or decluttering. This is something that I was really confused about for a very long time. I thought my problem was that I wasn't organized. I didn't realize that the problem, the reason I was so overwhelmed, distressed, felt like I was constantly cleaning or else my house was always a mess. I didn't realize that the problem wasn't a lack of organization. A problem was excess, too much stuff. And so I love that he really wants you to distinguish between organizing and decluttering. So here is an example of that. Here is underneath my bathroom sink in my townhouse where I lived several years ago. And before I ever embarked on a serious clutter-free journey. I was just like, oh, I could probably get rid of a couple things underneath the bathroom sink and I'm going to get organized under there is what I told myself. So I bought these pink bins from the dollar store and I thought, okay, great. I'm going to organize. Well, guess what? I overfilled. I overstuffed. I had so much stuff underneath that bathroom sink when I was done with my quote unquote organizing slash decluttering, which wasn't really decluttering project, that I still had a mess underneath my sink. It was still an issue, still a problem. I still couldn't find things. Things were still expiring. I still had an issue there. And so I had to realize later that it's not organizing that's gonna solve your clutter problem or make your life easier. It's getting rid of the stuff that you're not using or you don't need. And so that is one huge lesson that I learned from Joshua Becker originally that really helped me. So I talked a minute ago about how when we start to think about decluttering so often, we think about the things that we're afraid to get rid of or we spent a lot of money on or that were a gift or just in case we wanna hang on to it in case it's useful in the future. And it's really tempting to get hung up right there and not make progress at all past that point because we are still calculating the cost. We're thinking, I'm gonna be so wasteful if I get rid of this. I'm gonna be so ungrateful if I get rid of this. I'm gonna need it later. I don't wanna to have to go out and spend more time and more money replacing it. That just feels so inefficient. But he says the burden of clutter, the burden of clutter is money, time, focus, energy, and space. So I think kind of flipping in our mind where the cost really is, is so useful. Once we realize it's costing us more to actually keep the item than it is to get rid of it, it just gets that much easier. Then he also says keeping an item does not make it more useful. Just because you have three pairs of scissors does not mean you're actually using that third or even the second pair. When it comes to sentimental items, which I think hangs all of us up, myself included, this one is tough. He said, your memories are not stored in the object, the memories are in you. This is very helpful when you feel guilty, bad, or sad about getting rid of any sentimental items. Now, I have sentimental stuff. I have a couple bins of stuff. I have things I'm saving for my kids to give them when they're all grown up. I have absolutely no problem keeping sentimental items, but it's the idea that you have to keep everything where it kind of trips you up. It's tripped me up in the past where I feel like I have to keep every drawing, every school page. And I don't remember who said this. It's probably Joshua Becker. It, I think it is actually, if everything is special or important, then nothing is special and important. And I love that. It's the concept of just focusing on a few meaningful things and having that bring value to your life rather than feeling like you're thinking you have to keep all of it for the items to, or the memories to have meaning. Finally, one more amazing mental shift. He says, focus on the gains, not subtractions. 
Think about the concept of how owning less helps you live more. So I love this, that he broadens this idea beyond just, I have less to take care of if I get rid of stuff. I will have less money to spend on my heating and my air conditioning. I will expend less time. I won't have to have so much space to store my items. That's all the physical stuff and I think that is also really valuable. But I love that he has you envision the life that you want to live and focus on the things that you can keep that will promote that life that you want to have even if it's simple as can be, even if it's not traveling the world, which is awesome. That's not my dream right now. I am a stay at home mom with my little kids. My dream is to be able to create memories in the home, to not spend all my time cleaning, to have time to read stories and do preschool and craft. Like I want to do all of that. That is my dream. So if I can eliminate some of the clutter or a lot of the clutter in my home, I will have so much more time and energy, all the resources to focus on the life that I really want to live. So I love that. I think that's a great place to end. Please let me know what your thoughts are. What do you think about Joshua Becker? Have you read his book. I'll also leave some of the links that I mentioned in the description box below. Thanks for joining me guys and I'll see you soon. Bye.